If anything, Game of Thrones has taught us how not to stick the landing of a very popular TV show. But there are all these pesky books that are still yet to come out, so maybe the story can be redeemed. Let's go over top 10 things that probably will happen when the books are released. Now, I, like most fans, were very disappointed in the ending of Game of Thrones. Let's just face facts. It was really built up, and it was a culmination of a big story that just fell at the end. And it's not George R. R. Martin's fault. If anything, he had distanced himself from the show. And I really think he's finished the books, and he's just waiting until his death to release them. That or we'll get him in some kind of manuscript form. But the books, yeah, it's going to be a long time before we come out, they come out, but what from the show will still translate over? That's what the question is now. Number 10, Jon Snow will be resurrected. Now, of course, this is kind of an easy one because it's the only thing that makes sense. At the end of uh, the last book, Jon was laying dying. He, sh he mumbled, mumbled ghost and then seem to pass away. Now whether he gets resurrected, somehow survives, something like that, I don't know. Because without John surviving, the next piece would not make any sense. Number nine, Jon Snow is still a Targaryen. Now I really only bring this up because we already know this is the reality. The only reason the producers were even able to produce the show was because they guessed the parentage of Jon Snow correctly. We know this to be fact. Now, is it this nice wedding thing that we're seeing in the show, or is it something a little more odd, or maybe sinister, or something? That part's left to be questioned. But Jon Snow being a Targaryen would be terrible without Jon Snow surviving. He has to find out. Now, granted, in the show, that revelation totally went nowhere. And some could argue that will go nowhere in the books. I think it's going to lead to much bigger and better things, uh, especially around, around um, the last book, but more on that in a second. Number eight, The Battle of the Bastards. Maybe part of me is just hopeful on this one. This was such a good part of the series, and to me it marks the end of the really good stuff that happened in the series. Now the details will probably be different, I think Stannis will play a part in the, the uh, actual battle, and maybe he gets struck down in the middle of the battle or something, I'm not sure. Maybe Brienne finally exacts her revenge, who knows? But either way, it'll be come down to Jon Snow versus Ram Ramsay Snow, or Bolton, as it were. And that makes poetic sense, and plus the, the, the name Battle of the Bastards just sounds so good. I mean, it would be hard not to want that literally. Literally and in, in, in literature. I mean, it would just, it's one of those uh, names that just strong and rings out. So I think that will happen. Maybe the details will be changed, but that probably will be a thing. Number seven, Marcella will still die. Now, one of those really heartbreaking moments was when Marcella dies right in front of Jane. Now, I don't think she's going to die in that sense here, but probably she will die somehow, some way, through the story. Right now, she is the other idea for Dorne to claim the throne through the female, which is a Dorne thing. Females can inherit power that way. They're going to try to do it politically first, and then probably militarily with Young Griff, which is a whole other storyline that never got mentioned in, this, in the show. Now, through all of this, Marcella's probably going to end up getting killed. Now, how and why, I don't know. It would be really ironic if Cersei had something to deal with, do with it, though. That would be a good plot twist, especially on her prophecy. Number six, Tyrion Lannister will join Daenerys Targaryen. 
This one's pretty obvious. There's no other direction to go. It's almost like Martin has kind of written himself into a corner with Tyrion. He'll have to go with Danny. He'll have to go along with her. And he'll have to be an advisor to her in some capacity. It's just what's going to have to happen. I mean, I cannot for the life of me envision any other direction that Tyrion goes. Now, I could be wrong. I mean, Martin might pull a fast one on us. But I think the opportunity to have Tyrion with Danny, and I think when Martin's writing Tyrion, he won't get a case of the domes. He'll, he'll keep his brains about it. Number five, Theon will die defending Bran. This really seems like the best way to end Theon's arc to me. He tried to claim he killed Bran early on, of course. And him defending Bran really brought the character full circle. And I thought it was a good way. Now, I don't think it'll be against the uh, others, a.k.a. the White Walkers. Um, I think it'll be a slightly different. I'm not really sure. It could be even be in the Battle of the Bastards. You never know. But, yeah. Theon is not going to make it. He's going to gain some strength, and he'll get a little stronger. But he's not going to make it. He's destined to fall. And that seems the most logical way for him to fall. It brings him full circle. And it was probably one of the few good character arcs of Season 8 was Theon. So, why ruin a good thing, right? Number four, all of the phrase will die. Now, I don't think this is going to happen the way it did in the show. I don't think Arya is going to come up and kill some little kid and then pretend to uh, cook for an hour in the kitchen and then feed her sons to Walder and then pretend to be Walder. Now, what I could see happening is perhaps Lady Stoneheart and even to the point where she is manipulating Arya, that could work if Arya came back and then she starts manipulating Arya, that might work. That would fit in really well. But people are keep forgetting about Lady Stoneheart, Stoneheart because she wasn't in the show. And it was a real missed opportunity. And Martin himself said that if he could change one thing about the show, um, it would be the inclusion of Lady Stoneheart, which um, everything I've read on her is so compelling and so awesome. So I'm really surprised they left her out. But the resurrect cat being at the head of everything would probably make it a lot more interesting. She probably will also undo Will as well. I can see that happening. That uh, makes more literal and uh, narrative sense. Number three, Sansa will be Queen of the North. I think this one is one that D&D uh, &D got off of Martin himself. And if you pay attention in the books, it makes more sense. She was never married to Ramsay. She never went to Winterfell and was never assaulted. She is in the Aerie with Littlefinger getting ready to be married off to someone else. And he seems to be grooming her. And what I see is... Littlefinger was grooming her to, so he can control her, so he would control the North. Because she makes sense to be the next successor. For all anybody knows, all the males are dead. So, automatically it would go to the woman. And in the North, a woman inheriting is not as big a deal. In addition to that, if you take a look, really Sansa's the only one who would be able to be uh, the ruler of Winterfell. We don't know what's going to happen to Rickon in the book, but we can guess. Bran I'll cover in a second. Arya herself probably will run off. Jon, he's technically a Targaryen. He's not really a Stark, and he's going to find that out, I'm pretty sure. So, really, there's no one left to rule the North. And in a way, it gets Sansa everything she ever wanted. Which is kind of cool, but kind of tragic at the same time. Now, I do think she'll play a small part in uh, Littlefinger's Undoing. Not as big a part as she played in the show. I don't think she's going to separate the North from the Seven Kingdoms. I could be wrong on that. That would be an interesting take, though. It would be interesting to see how that turns out. Number two. At the end of the story, Bran Stark will sit on the throne because we already know from the outline, at the end, Bran Stark sits on the throne. That's kind of a gimme. Now, I'm sure it's going to be in a much more interesting way rather than he sort of gets the participation trophy. 
I don't know if he's going to be without his emotions the way he was in the show. That's one a hard one to call. There are still a lot of question marks with the Three-Eyed Raven. What's going on with him? Noting that he too is a Targaryen. And what exactly is going on with Bran himself? It's very odd, very strange, and very weird. We know what happens to Hodor. And knowing that kind of helps out too because something serious is going to happen up there in the north. And we're going to see it and it's going to be weird. Still, I think Martin's going to make it far more interesting than the television show ever thought it'd be. And of course, number one, Daenerys Targaryen will destroy King's Landing. This one's probably going to stick in the craw some people who thought this was a ridiculous twi twist. However, if you read the books, you see some signs. For example, D&D only used Quaid in two scenes, and she only once directly addressed Daenerys. In the book, she's appearing all over the place to the point I'm wondering if she might be a new station. It's really strange, really weird, and calls in question a whole lot of things. In addition to that, her mental state in the end of the last book didn't seem too well. And you gotta wonder what was gonna happen next. She probably ha has more hints of something's going on, someone is manipulating her than anybody else in the story. And I don't think people have caught it yet. You go back and reread it and catch little bits and pieces. But in the readers of the book, I don't think a lot of them have caught on that something is influencing Daenerys and making her go in directions. Now, what exactly is it and what are the motivations is really hard to say. But at the same time, it could also be multiple entities trying to influence her, whether it be the Red Priestess, whether it be a previous Targaryen who's a Three-Eyed Raven, whether it be perhaps something else, like Quaith. It's hard to say, but all of this is going to come together and will lead to Daenerys' madness, and her madness will make sense in that context. It might be centered around the death of Masundi. She might die the exact same way. And keeping in mind, too, in the books, she's only about 10 or 11 years old, so it's not the same thing. It's not losing your best friend. It's losing almost a child. And after what Daenerys has been through, that could work. I could see Daenerys attacking the city. Cersei executes Masundi, And then Daenerys just loses it completely and totally totally just blows up and maybe the guards are using the civilians as human shields and just says the hell with it let's bring them all down and boom and then everyone is in shock at what she has done and that is when people realize she's crazy because if you really think about it, the act itself it wasn't that insane the jarringness and the lack of build towards it was what was the problem kind of just came out of left field and for no reason in the books i think there will be reasons i think it will make perfect logical sense and that you already know daenerys is touching on madness and she just needs a little push to get her over and the combination of the manipulations along with the loss of Sunday would be convincing enough to do that okay so there you have it that is the top 10 things i think will happen that did happen in the show game of thrones that will happen in the books the song ice of fire Next, we're going to get on to the things that won't happen, but that is going to be another video, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, have a great day.